Now we're going to talk about measures of spread. And when you think about go socks, one of the S's in go socks is spread. So when you describe a distribution, you need to be able to describe the spread in some way. There's three different measures of spread that we're going to focus on, and one of them is the range. Okay, you've seen the range and how you should know how to find range. You've probably seen that since elementary school. You take the maximum value in your data set minus the minimum value in your data set. And that gives you the range. Now, the range isn't one of the most useful uh, measures of spread. It's there. We should talk about it. And sometimes it's nice. It's actually more helpful when you're comparing two different data sets at the same time. Um, but that's how you find the range. Another measure of spread is the interquartile range. And we looked at that in one of our previous videos when we were talking about the five number summary and how to make box plots. So hopefully you remember that the IQR, or interquartile range, is when you take the third quartile and subtract away the first quartile. Q3 has a value, Q1 has a value. If you're not, sh not sure what this is, you need to go back and watch some of the previous videos. And you can see that this is uh, one of our measures of spread, the interquartile range. The last measure of spread that we're going to look at, and probably the one that you'll use most often, is standard deviation. This is a value that has a formula to it, and lots of times you'll just see it uh, labeled as SD, maybe a couple of periods in there for standard deviation. I'm not going to show you how to find standard deviation by hand right now, at least not in this video. Um, I'll probably show it to my classes at school if you're watching this and you're not um, in any of my classes. Sorry about that. But um, I will show you how to find standard deviation on your calculator. And there's a few other useful things on your graphing calculator that I'll show you right now. And I think that you'll, you'll appreciate those things. So I've got my, got my calculator here, and here's a bigger screen. So let's look at the, the, how to find some basic statistics on your calculator, including standard deviation. I put, if I hit stat, and then choose number one, edit, stat, the stat button is uh, two to the right of the alpha button, and you push edit, you'll be able to get to your lists. And I've got a list, and if you're familiar, you've watched our previous videos, um, I've got the number of times I've watched Star Wars since, uh, the original Star Wars mo movie since 1977. Now, I've already put these numbers in order. So 1977, one, seeing it once and twice in 78 and twice in 79, these numbers don't line up with these. So I'm just going to focus on list number five real quick. I'm going to hit second and then quit to go back to my home screen. Whenever you're in your list, let me go back to the list. Whenever you're in your list, don't hit clear. Um, clear, it might, if I hit clear, it's going to clear out this that data value, and I don't want to do that. So it's better to hit second and then quit, which is right next to the second button, and it takes you back to your home screen. So just be careful when doing that uh, or trying to get back to your home screen. Well, I want to find the basic statistics for list number five. So I can hit stat, which is the same number, the button I hit before, and go over to calculate. And this very first function, one var stats, one variable statistics, is going to be very, very useful. Get used to using this one variable statistics a lot if you're taking a stats class right now. So I'm going to use one of our stats, and I press enter, and there it shows up. But then I need to tell the calculator what list I wanted to find these statistics for. Um, if I just hit enter, it's going to find it for list number one. And in my case, I didn't have anything in list number one. So it says invalid dimensions because there was nothing in my L1. So let's clear that off, and let's try it again. Let's go stat, calculate, number one. And I've got one var stats, and I want to tell the calculator to, to find the one variable statistics for list number five. So I hit second, and then the number five. Once again, second, and then the number five, and it gives me L5, one var stats for list number five. When I hit enter, it gives me all kinds of statistics. The very first one that it gives me, X bar, is the mean, 4.32. It gives me the sum of all my x's. It gives me the sum of all of my uh, data values that are squared. So it squares all the data values and adds them up. These two we, we don't, won't use very often. But then it has s here. Okay? And this s is what we are going to use for standard deviation. 
Okay, so the standard deviation of my data set is 2.56. Okay. Um, if I go down a little bit further, it also shows me the total number of data values that I have. And if I continue even further, look at what it gives me. Minimum, the first quartile, the median, which is also the second quartile, the third quartile, and the maximum. Right here, it gives me the five number summary. So when I do one bar stats, I get the five number summary, and I also get the mean, and I also get the standard deviation. Now let me go back and talk about the symbols here real quick. S, or S sub S sometimes, is what we're going to use for the standard deviation of a sample or of our data set. Okay? So S is the symbol for the standard, put a D in there, standard deviation of a sample. You saw another symbol there, which was sigma. Looked like this. Let me make that a little bit nicer. It kind of looks like that. Okay? That is the standard deviation of a population. So if the data that you data set that you have comes from a sample and you talk about the standard deviation, you want to use the symbol S. If the, po if the standard deviation or the, the data set that you have comes from a population, or that is the population, then the symbol that you will use is right here, sigma. It kind of looks like a cursive O. All right? You need to use the proper symbols. If you're talking about the standard deviation of a sample and you use sigma instead of lowercase s, then you're going to be, th then whoever's reading it, if they know what they're doing, will realize that you weren't real sure on which symbol to use. Standard deviation for a sample, use lowercase s, and standard deviation of a population, use the, the Greek letter sigma.